Hey there guys, today we're going to be doing a comparison of these two mini PCs right here, this being the Boss Game P5 and this being the Minis Forum UM760. So this is rocking a Ryzen 5 6600H that is paired with 24 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 mega transfers RAM. This on the other hand is rocking a Ryzen 5 7640HS processor and while it originally came with 16 gigabytes of single channel memory i did upgrade this to 32 gigabytes of dual channel and that is running at 5600 mega transfers both of them have one terabyte gen 4 ssds and well that really doesn't affect the performance and the things we're going to be taking a look at what i'm mostly focused on is the gaming performance between these two devices but let's just jump right on in and see what the comparison is like between these two so starting off the game comparisons we are going to be using cap frame x built-in comparison tool so we ran the built-in benchmarks for a few games on both systems identical settings so we can see what the performance difference is like and starting off we're taking a look at black myth wukong and i did run this with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we did use fsr with an upscale base resolution of 66 percent of 1080p and we did not turn on any frame generation and as you can see already right off the bat we can see there is a a massive difference in performance where the 6600h was getting an fps average of 24.7 the 7640hs was able to give us a fps average of 40.2 this goes from being effectively a slideshow to a decent enough experience that you could get away with playing like this and well what this really means is that for the fps average we're looking at the 760m giving about a hundred and 62.8% of the performance of the 660M when it comes to the FPS average, 160.7% for the 1% lows, and 158.8% for the 0.2% lows. That's a pretty substantial increase, especially in a scenario where you go from being effectively unplayable to something that is passable. Now, I did also check out Company of Heroes 3 running on both systems, and that is is at the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR and FSR is at the quality preset. And here we see some massive differences in performance. Well, I wouldn't say that the 6600H was giving an unplayable experience. An FPS average of 45 is more than playable in this type of title. The fact that the 660M is giving us about 60% the performance of the 760M is pretty substantial here. And these even enormous gains carry over to the 1% lows and the 0.2% lows. So while both of them give us a playable experience in this title, what you do have the headroom for is to play around with the graphic settings if playing at the absolute lowest graphic settings isn't really what you are looking to do, which I completely understand. Of course, Counter-Strike 2 is the most popular game on Steam, so there was no way that I could not test it out. And here running with the lowest in-game graphic settings, though we did disable FSR. FSR gets turned on when you go with the lowest graphics preset. So I manually disabled that. So no FSR was used here. And both systems give a great result. This pretty much puts any system that is based off of the old Vega integrated graphics to shame because of the fact that, well, that just has not aged as well as the RDNA based iGPUs. But clearly there is still a gain to be had going with the 760M instead. Though it's not as substantial as the previous title where the 660m is giving about 72 percent of the performance of the 760m but the one percent lows and 2.2 percent lows also show some great results so it takes an already very playable experience and just turns it into a much smoother more consistent and higher refresh rate gaming experience hitman 3 also known as hitman world of assassination is another title that showed some massive gains Gains. And this is with the lowest in-game graphics settings, though we are using FSR at the quality preset as well. And with these graphics settings, we do see the 660M give us more of a 50 FPS average gaming experience with 1% lows and 0.2% lows that drop down into the high 30s or very low 40s. Meanwhile, the 760M is able to give us a consistent above 60 FPS average with 0.2% with 
equipment lows that just fall underneath that. But in general, it's going to be a 60 FPS and above gaming experience almost all the time. But it should be noted that in a lot of the titles we've seen so far, only one of them has gone from an unplayable experience to a playable experience. In a lot of these so far, it seems like this is more of an enhancement that makes your experience better, but it isn't the deciding factor in all cases so far. So the next title that I took a look at is Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord, and this was running with the medium in-game graphics settings. And medium is the ideal one that you want to go for because of the fact that it provides a massive leap in quality in comparison to low and very low, while still being pretty easy to run on a lot of systems. Though you can see that the 660M was not doing a great job here. The medium graphics preset comes with the largest leap in visual performance upgrade, where you go from low looking like you're playing Warband. When you jump up to medium, that's when it starts to look like a new generation of game in comparison to Warband. So while it's not the most demanding thing in the world, I mean, th this is integrated graphics we're talking about. It's clear that the 660M is really falling behind here, giving us only an FPS average of 33.6, 1% lows of 27.6, and 0.2% lows of 27.2. So it's a very consistent 30 FPS experience most of the time. So it's not unplayable, it's just not ideal. But at the medium graphics settings, the 760M is giving us an FPS average that is almost at 60, 1% lows of 43.6 and 0.2% of 38 mean that it's still going to be a very smooth and consistent experience. And you're not really going to run into many issues at all. That's a pretty substantial win. Of course, I also took a look at Rainbow Six Siege running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR 2.0 with the quality preset. And while the 6600H was giving a more than playable result and a very consistent one at that, the 7640HS ends up with a pretty substantial lead here again, where we now go into the triple digits for all of the frame rate metrics. And this effectively sees a 57.2% increase in the FPS average, with similar increases across the board for both the 1% lows and 0.2% lows. That means that if you have a high refresh rate display, you can take advantage of it on here, and you'll get the vast majority of the benefit from it. Not a bad result at all considering that this is just a one generation difference, but it should be noted that it's not like you're going from an unplayable experience to something that will finally let you play the game. This was already a very playable experience that just is made better. And that can be beneficial in and of itself if you don't want to use FSR. Now, the next game that I took a look at is one that destroys pretty much any system that I've tried to run it on, and that is Returnal. This is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR at the quality preset. And in this one, both systems ended up giving a pretty bad result. And though there is a substantial difference between the two it's not like you're going from a unplayable experience to a playable one both of them are going to be pretty bad but that is still a 55.5 percent increase in performance for the fps average and the one percent lows end up seeing a 64.3 percent so there are massive gains here it's just it's not pushing this to a territory where i would consider this to be truly playable and the last game that we're taking a look at is tiny tina's wonderlands and this was one that was the most surprising to me because on the 660m it was showing the biggest discrepancy between the fps average and the 0.2 percent lows while the fps average of 41.8 isn't too bad at all the one percent lows being at 25.4 is pretty brutal and add on top of that the 0.2 percent lows of 11.3 and it really shows that it wasn't exactly a very consistent experience you can see here by the frame time variance chart that that the 6600H is spending a lot more frames in essentially stutter zone than the 7640HS is dealing with at all. So there is clearly some issues happening here. The 660M is just not able to do it. And it ends up showing some massive gains where the FPS average ends up seeing an 87.3% increase. The 1% lows end up seeing a 173.6% 
6% increase and the 0.2% lows end up seeing a 443.4% increase. Pretty astonishing stuff there. So after that game testing, it becomes pretty clear that there was a massive generational uplift that happened here. You know, it's a real shame that all these Zen 4 processors were so expensive when they first launched because that's really put all of the Ryzen 5 series in such an awkward spot. We really mostly end up seeing these Ryzen 5 processors end up in gaming laptops more than anything else because of the fact that at the price point they come in, other APUs ended up becoming more popular. The Ryzen 5 series has kind of had a little bit of an identity crisis because it's meant to be the budget option, the middle of the ground before you start going into really low end series. But when they're at price points that rival higher end chips from the previous generation, it can be tough to sell. You know, because this Ryzen 5 processor in a lot of ways is better than something like a Zen 3 or Zen 3 Plus Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 processor. You know, it has better single core performance. Its multi-core performance is comparable to it. It ends up in a very interesting position where because it's a Ryzen 5, people expect it to be at a cheap price, but it's only until we start looking at the previous generation that we start to get into those reasonable price points. And I mean, you can pick this system up for $350, but you end up with only 16 gigabytes of RAM and that's in single chip. So you have to buy another stick and you're looking at spending around another $20. So a $350 mini PC is really now $370 to $380. And now is the difference between these two worth an extra $100? Well, from looking at the gaming performance, if that's something that really matters to you, yes, that is going to be a worthwhile investment because the longevity of this is very clear. You know, there are titles that aren't going to be playing well on the P5 already versus this, which was able to handle the vast majority of titles thrown at it, which means it's going to age more gracefully. And while I still think that the P5 holds a lot of value for people that don't care at all about the GPU performance and are more worried about the CPU, the CPU uplift between the two here does not make the price difference worthwhile. In that scenario, you're better off just buying the P5 and enjoying the six cores, 12 threads based off of Zen 3 Plus, as opposed to spending an extra $100 for the Zen 4 upgrade, because it really isn't worthwhile if you just care about day-to-day -day tasks. While there is a massive difference in terms of single core performance, that doesn't translate to much of anything if all you're going to be doing is basic day-to-day -day tasks and you're not doing anything that's really stressing the CPUs. But let me know what you think down below. Do you think that the performance difference between these two is worthwhile? Personally, I think that at the price point that it's at, it's definitely worth considering. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.